get right to uh, the issue at hand. Y'all have already been talking about it. We've been discussing it right here on TV One. After yesterday's despicable news conference by President Donald Trump, I was in my car uh, trying to decide what is it that I wanted to listen to uh, to put into proper context my feelings about what we heard. And I thought back uh, to the first black woman elected from the South since Reconstruction, uh, Congresswoman Barbara Jordan of Houston. Here's what she had to say in 1973 at the Watergate hearings. Earlier today, we heard the beginning of the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. We the people. It's a very eloquent beginning. But when that document was completed on the 17th of September in 1787, I was not included in that we the people. I felt somehow for many years that George Washington and Alexander Hamilton just left me out by mistake. But through the process of amendment, interpretation, and court decision, I have finally been included in We the People. Today I am an inquisitor, and hyperbole would not be fictional and would not overstate the solemnness that I feel right now. My faith in the Constitution is whole, it is complete, and I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. Sybil, just like Congresswoman Barbara Jordan, I will not be an idle spectator to a white supremacists sitting in the White House. I will not be an idle spectator to see Donald Trump walk in the footsteps of Republican Herbert Hoover, who led the Lily White movement when he was president from 1929 to 1933. I will not sit idly by to see Donald Trump act like Democrat uh, uh, Woodrow Wilson, one of the most violent racists we've ever had served in the office of the president. The fact of the matter is yesterday's news conference was shameful. It was despicable. It was, it was him giving the middle finger to black people, to Jews, to Hispanics, to Asians, to women, to white people of conscience. This is a president who has no shame. He is an immoral leader. Now, I know some people out there will say, well, he was elected. But yes, but guess what? Wilson was elected. So was Hoover was elected and other races who have served in that particular White House. What this man has done by lining himself with neo-Nazis and with white supremacists is shameful and should not go unchecked. But it's not just a question of going unchecked. It go, we must do more than simply tweet and comment on Facebook. This is a challenge. This is a declaration of war. And I also talked about, again, uh, what I was listening to, and I had to play this, Tom, by Reverend Charles Jenkins. Many of you might have heard this. When the enemy is swinging at you, you can't go down or fall down. You have to swing back. When the enemy's attacking you, you can't give up. You can't throw in the tower. But you got to get yourself together. And you got to come hard. Am I talking to any real people in the building? So when the enemy comes at you, you got to know that the weapons of our warfare are not proper, but right into the pulling down of stronghold, you got some weapons, and you can't take it later. You got to fight back. So when the enemy comes at you, you got to say, you know what, devil? I'm not going to break down. I'm not going to fall down. I'm not going to go down. I'm going to get my Holy Ghost sway. And I'm going to say, peace. Tom, for 398 years, black folks have been fighting in this country to ensure that it lives up to its ideals. For 398 years, we've made it perfectly clear we're not going to sit idly by and allow ourselves to be embarrassed and run over and shamed by white supremacists. This is the 190th anniversary of the first black newspaper, Freedom's Journal, which was founded in March 1827. In their lead editorial, they wrote, we wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. This is a moment where we don't need anybody else to speak for us. We can speak with clarity 
and with precision as to exactly what is required of us. And what this requires, it requires alphas and kappas and omegas and sigmas, iotas, aka's, deltas, zetas, sigma gamma rho, the links. It requires the, the Prince Hall Masons. It requires me by me. It requires people of conscience to stand up, whether you are bougie, whether you are grassroots, whether you are, in, what, 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 no matter where you are, it requires black people and other people of conscience to say we are going to oppose any effort to go back to the days of Jim Crow, to go back to the days at the Reconstruction, when you had the Redeemer movement by Democrats, when the Lily White movement by white folks as well in this country on the Republican side. We have seen this before, and every time it has happened, we fought back. And what that means is it's time for folks to stand up and mobilize and organize. It means that when it comes to the ballot box, I don't care who you are. I don't want to hear anybody say my vote does not matter because when you see a white supremacist at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, all you need, that's the only proof you need to show your vote does indeed matter. What that means is we need people in Virginia, in Tennessee, in Mississippi, in Alabama, in Texas, in Georgia, in Florida, in Illinois, in California, in Wisconsin, in Michigan, in Pennsylvania to say enough is enough. What it means for us to go to city council meetings, county commissioner meetings, uh, state meetings, go to the governor's mansion and say we are going to rain a holy hell down on any politician who stands with Donald Trump. Mm. If you think we are playing, you are wrong. The previous generation, the baby boomers, they stood up. Our grandmothers and grandfathers stood up. Our mothers and fathers stood up. It is time for Gen X and Gen Y and millennial generation to stand up and say we are going to take this fight on and go after anybody who stands in our path. I will not stand idly by and listen to Donald Trump anymore. I will not listen to a man who is an immoral leader. I will not listen to anybody, whether they are black Republican, who agrees with him, who voted for him, who continues to apologize for him. And you will be name checked, you will be embarrassed, and you will not be invited to anything that involves black people. It is time for us to call people out. It is time for us to realize that we cannot wait. In 2018, we're we're going to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Dr. King being assassinated. We're going to focus on the 50th anniversary of the Kerner Commission's report on the race riots in 1967. Do understand this is a moment where people are going to have to decide whose side they are on. Are you on the side of righteousness? Or are you on the side of bigotry? Mm. Are you on the side of just people? Or are you on the side of white supremacists? There is not going to be any any effort to say I can stand on either one and I don't care who you are if you're a Republican or Democrat you have been served notice mm -hmm. if you stand with this man if you support white nationalist policies we are going to take you out at the ballot box and put people of conscience in. Heather Hayer is going to be buried today. She is a 21st century version of Viola Uzo, a white woman from Michigan who died trying to help black folks to vote. This is not a black thing or Hispanic thing or Asian thing. It's a conscious thing. Mm -hmm. This is a battle for the soul of America. And like the Tuskegee Airmen said, we will fight to the last hour, to the last minute, to the last second. We will fight, fight, fight. Number 45, game on. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.